so much. Oh, you know? my pleasure. Yeah. It's a great people, great class. Thank you yeah, so much. You. And, and you've done such a great job of organizing it and follow through to come here. It must be very satisfying for you, yes? Yeah, thank you very much. Actually, it's the Mongolian kids, it's the first time taking the design to class. So, uh, what do you think about uh, our kids? Just give us a short feedback about our kids. Well, I told you coming in, it's an interesting thing. I had no preconceptions because this is your first year here, right? Mm -hmm. But I do know people from Central Asia, and I, I didn't have any um, preconceptions, but I am in awe of uh, the language level. Uh, the ability, the openness, the awareness, not that I thought otherwise, but just a very well-rounded bunch of students, very similar to the uh, young women who come from the private colleges in the Philippines. Unpretentious, willing to learn, yet also with the strength of an opinion to be willing to contribute right away. That's a very magical combination, I have to tell you that. Thank you so much, Professor. So it was awesome. Like, this, I saw that some of our kids are crying and some of them are so happy and then sharing stories. So I never seen this lots of emotion during the class. So what is your first impression and how was the, the class with Mongolian kids? So, um, I love Mongolia. I've been to Mongolia and I love the country. I'm always fascinated by the country. And so it's just a, such a great pleasure to have a first group of students from Mongolia. And the thing that really surprised me was how open they were, uh, that they were able to share their story, very personal stories. Um, and they're very funny. They're very funny. They're very interesting kids. They have diverse opinions and ideas and uh, how honest they were. And I think that uh, um, just the stories really moved me. Uh, it shows them as people, as thoughtful, smart, um, and uh, just very uh, interesting people. And I, I can't wait. I, I hope that I'll get a chance to learn by what will happen to them 10 years from now, you know? Uh, are they gonna find their true love? Are they gonna be successful? I would love to find out because um, I just, I think they're too okay. I'll be happy to share Oh, please do, them. yeah. I, I, I would, um, I love them. I, it's, it's been such a fun, fun morning. Like you said, I lost track of time because I was just so into the stories they were telling. Yeah. So I wish we had more time, actually. Yeah, that's great. So just the one more thing is, what would be your advice to the teenagers to find their right, there's love. Stuff. you know what they already have it right as you see they know they already know they're very critical of themselves they already have an idea of who they want to be what they want to be um, I think the goal here is not for them to discover something new I think that they're not that they already have it it just they just need to face it. And I think for some of them it's scary, right? And that's what was so amazing to me when they were so honest about what they want, the things that they want, uh, the things that they fear. So they, they got it, they, they have their North Star. It's just holding on to that, to know to know it truly, and then to hold on to that. So it's amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Actually, just uh, make a. Uh, can you just give a small advice that for the kids how they should develop their design thinking mm -hmm. uh, uh, ability? So I think one big thing is just keeping in mind that um, having a process like design thinking is useful when you're stuck with a problem. Um, and it's not just something, uh, the design thinking process isn't just something that you use abstractly. This is something that's meant to be useful in your own life. Um, so we have these series of questions on the board. Um, next time you run into a problem, you can ask, who is it, is it being affected by? Um, how can we learn more about them? How can we narrow our problem down um, to something more solvable? Um, how can we come up with a lot of different ideas and making sure um, we're exploring various options? Um, let's see, how can we build to communicate what that idea is? And how can we test and see if that idea works in the real world? Um, so just keeping in mind that these questions are useful and can actually 
being of help mm-hmm. in actual situations, I think, is the best thing to do. Like you, you have a you have a process. You've seen how it works. Uh-huh. Um, now think about in your daily life how being of light. Okay, that's great. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So class is very interesting. So actually, it was quite different than what I was expecting. I thought it's just a literature, but you were just mostly talking about actually just connecting ourselves. Mm-hmm. So uh, can you just give it just short advice to the young kids and how they should practice to connect with themselves? Yeah. So first, the reason I focus on the relationship with yourself is because it's the relationship that is impacting every single relationship we have. Yeah, we don't talk about it because if people have a bad mood and they don't know how to handle the ups and downs of life, then they react to other people. So learning how to um, handle the, the internal world of a human being, the emotions, the thoughts, when something goes the way we don't want it to. So my recommendation would be to be kind to yourself and to others and think twice about what you're saying in your head. Would you say that to a friend of yours? Most of the time, we're much harder on ourselves than we would be on other people. And there's a lot of research that when you have higher confidence, you actually make more money, your health is better, um, you'll pursue jobs that are more fulfilling and that you're better at. So, um, yeah, my recommendation is to be kind to yourself. Yeah, so the to, be, to being a kind to ourselves is sometimes mostly difficult. So, what uh, can you just give us the few tools that can just we can practice our uh, to be yeah. kind to ourselves? Um, one really easy tool is we actually did this in the class yeah. is to find a love song and sing it to yourself. That was awesome. That's one way. Another way is actually sometimes it's really hard to do it for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so partner up with a friend and make up the, make the practice of appreciating each other. So appreciate each other. And it, it's crazy how much love it creates by just saying what you love about someone. And going, you know, loving their qualities, not necessarily, you know, I like your hair. Like going a little deeper. Okay, okay. So those are some really easy ways to practice um, being kind to ourselves. That's amazing.